are at Tohoku University to visit the Department of Aerospace Engineering, which is home to one of the finalist teams of Google Lunar X Prize. Professor Kazuya Yoshida, with his own space robotics laboratory since 1995, saw Google's incentive prize as an opportunity to broaden research on planetary exploration. In 2010, we came across a very challenging program called Google Lunar X Prize. So Google Lunar X Prize is a worldwide competition and in which um, only private entity uh, can participate and develop the uh, robotic system for the lunar exploration. So idea is to launch rocket and travel onto the surface of the moon. Then after successful landing, your team should have a robotic rover to travel over the 500 meters, then transmit the high quality images. As soon as I heard about this challenging competition scenario, I soon decided to participate in this program. And the team Hakuto is combined team between Tokyo team uh, who has a management uh, activities and Tohoku team who has a technology for the robotic robots. Google Lunar X Prize is the largest international prize of all time and Team Hakuto, with its Japanese and international members, has been selected as a finalist for the Milestone Prize. If they do land on the moon, they will make history in the Chronicle of Space Missions. So all of the missions that uh, were sent to the moon until now have been through national programs like the United States, Russia, China, uh, India and Japan have orbiters, um, but they're all national programs requiring huge amounts of funds and no return on investment really. So the genius of the Google Lunar X Prize is that it's not actually paying for the whole mission, it's just recouping some of your costs after the fact, which means you have to have a business plan that works in order to go in the first place. And so if Team Hakuto wins the Google Lunar X Prize, uh, iSpace will be the first private company and Tohoku University will be the first university to have put a rover on the moon. But it's not being a pioneer in the private space industry that's most exciting about this mission, but the potential for scientific discoveries that will follow. The reason this mission is so exciting is uh, starting in about 2009, a Japanese mission uh, orbiting the moon started discovering uh, what we think are entrances to lava tubes. And so from above, they look like just holes into the surface of the moon. And uh, so in the last four or five years, we've collected a lot of information on these. And they really look like an entrance into a cave on the moon. And so our mission will be the first to actually explore one of these features. So our mission idea is to send a true rover system and traveling over the surface, relatively flat area, but approach to the one of the such holes, a skylight. Then a bigger one stays on the edge of the hole, then this small one goes down in the hole in such a way and, uh, and connected by tethers. Yeah. So hanging by tethers, they go, go down to the hole, cave and make a bottom uh, of the hole, then make some exploration. And after the exploration, we winding up the cable and retrieve the rover. So today, nobody looked at the caves on the surface of the moon. So this will make great discoveries afterward. However, it is not easy to open a portal to the unknown. Moonraker, the prototype of the larger rover, will have to overcome a number of tests to proceed to the next level. As Carl Sagan once said, somewhere, something incredible 
is waiting to be known. Yes, a dream is being realized in this laboratory in Sendai. And their dream is the dream of all humanity. To find out what's out there and get a glimpse, no matter how small, of the mysteries of our universe.